Are you a kettlebell beginner and you're looking for a great place to start? I got something for you. Check the first link in the description. It leads to our free kettlebell workout course that will serve you 30 days filled with kettlebell workouts. Click the link, sign up and enjoy. Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Lebestag hier. This session was awesome. It was a live seminar that I held just a couple of days ago. Now in this live seminar, we were teaching exercises for kettlebell beginners. We've also included a powerful workout at the end. The exercise we are going to cover are the hinge, the deadlift, the double-handed press, and the hand-to-hand -hand swing. Since this was a live seminar, you sometimes see me stepping away from the camera watching our participants don't let this confuse you just follow along as if you were part of this powerful kettlebell seminar for beginners you want to make sure this is a follow along seminar so you can do two things either just watch this whole thing take notes and then try it on your own afterwards or you can follow along because after we have learned these three exercises one of the most important things about learning or knowledge is putting it into play, putting in the reps and applying the knowledge that we are gathering. So now the first exercise that I want to show you is the deadlift. Now we're gonna do a couple of things with the deadlift. I wanna prep the exercise first because hidden in the deadlift is one of the most important movement patterns that you need when you start with kettlebells observe and watch me closely as i demonstrate the hinge watch one more this movement pattern the hinge we're going to learn it now together is included in the deadlift, the swing, the clean, the snatch, and more exercises as well. That's why the hinge is so important. So let's try this together we want to understand what it means to move the hips so now what you want to do is make sure you step away from the camera so you can still see me make sure nothing is in close proximity no kettlebells no couch no pets no dog no anything make sure you are free to move so now I want you to do the following stand like me in front of the camera not on a frontal plane, but a little bit sideways. If you don't want to turn on the camera, it's totally fine. But try to follow me now. Stand shoulder width apart. Straight posture. Now listen before we move. What happens in the hips? We push the hips forward. Watch. Don't do it now. Just watch first. We push the hips forward. Our upper body reacts and our knees are unlocking the knees are not bending but they're also not completely straight they are unlocking your knees as well as your upper body react to the hip and as i'm in that position imagine two things before you follow me listen imagine like you're getting ready like a ski jumper ready to jump or imagine that my back has now become a table. So if I want to put an object, object on the table, I have to keep the back straight, not vertical, straight. So the spine has to be straight. And then once I come up, I'm not moving from the knees, I am moving from the hips. So now, try to follow me. We're gonna do five reps. And after those five reps, you do five more, and then I'll be watching you guys, those who have turned the cameras on, okay? Now try to follow me first, shoulder width apart. Are you ready? Chest up, shoulders back, let's do it. Hips back, go slowly, go slowly. Now keep that bottom position. Now I'm looking towards the floor, my eyes are peeling the floor. My hips is back, 
I have a straight back, a straight spine. Now I come up. One more. Push those hips back. Keep that back straight. Keep that position. Come back up. That's two. One more. Push those hips back. Keep that position. Come back up. Two more. Push those hips back. Keep that position. Come back up. Last one. Push those hips back. Imagine your spine is like, your back is like a table. Come back up. And now relax a little bit. So now what you want to try is the following. Observe me first. You know now what's happening, right? As we push our hips back, I feel some tension going on right here. Now in order to do a deadlift, I want to grab the kettlebell right here. I can't grab it right now if I keep that position, so I have to bend my knees a little bit. Grab the kettlebell, push those shoulders back, and now I stand up. Boom. I'm pushing the hips back, dropping the kettlebell, coming back up, up, and back down. And as I'm bringing the kettlebell back down, I want the kettlebell to rest between my legs, approximately in the middle of my feet not in front. So now practice with me a couple of reps whenever you are ready. It's three, two, we go very slowly. One, let's do it. Push your hips back and now we stand up, grab the kettlebell, boom, fully extend your hips. Come back down, hinge, bend the knees a little bit, bring the kettlebell back down, now back up. One more, Bring the kettlebell back down, make, have it touch the floor, back up. The last one, put the kettlebell back down, bring it up, boom, and that's it. Let me make it clear, understanding the hinge and the deadlift, this movement, understanding what it means to move the hips without too much interference from your knees is a crucial element that you need to understand. We see it in practice. People are not really connected to their hips. And if they are, they don't understand how to really push the hips forward or hip thrust the kettlebell. It's too hard for them to learn. So, or too hard for them to, to trigger. Because most people are sitting on a desk all day, so we're not used to fully extending the hips to get the, the biggest muscles to work, which are located right here. So understand the hinge and practice the hinge and practice the deadlift. We want to do now something for the upper body, okay? Stuff that goes overhead. Now here becomes a little bit tricky, depending on the weight you are using. So many people have trouble pushing the kettlebell with one arm only. So what we teach beginners at first is understanding how to press the kettlebell overhead with both hands. If you use both hands or both arms respectively, you're able, you have more power, more strength, and you're able to correct if needed, which is an easier thing to do with both hands. So now what we do is a double-handed press. So watch me, observe. I bring the kettlebell up, and as I'm cleaning it, cleaning means I bring it up to chest level, watch what I do, boom. I bring my thumbs inside the window. This is the kettlebell window right here the space between the handle and the bell, and my fingers connect with the bell itself. And then, as soon as I have this grip, I have the, band, uh, the handle point to my chest. As it points to my chest, I keep my elbows close to my body. Now I'll lean back just a little bit. I'm pushing my neck back a little bit. Now I press the kettlebell overhead. And as I'm pressing the kettlebell overhead, I want to make sure that I have my arms fully extended. As I come back down, I make sure that the elbows stay close to each other. Let me demonstrate again. One more. There you go. What is important about the press is the handle should always stay neutral. So these are neutral hands, right? Let me demonstrate again with the bell up in front. So that's a neutral position. I don't want the handle to drop down. Now it isn't neutral anymore and I feel some tension in my wrist or in my thumbs. And if it goes overhead, I don't want this to happen. I always want to make sure that the handle points towards my chest when it's in the rack position. This is a rack position. And once it's overhead, I want the handle to, to point backwards. 
Okay? Now let's try this. We want to try the following first. Bring the kettlebell up so that, we call this the CrossFit grip, so that the thumbs are inside the window and the fingers are on the bell. Let's try this. Three, two, one. Bring it up. Boom. Make sure the handle points toward your chest. Now, contract your abdominals, build up some tension. Now bring the kettlebell overhead. Fully extend the arms. Fully extend the elbows. Oh, I like what I'm seeing. Awesome. Now, bring the kettlebell back down. Now come back up. Come back down. Now one more, bring it up, and I want to watch your extension. This is something that we always check when people come in here for the first time, and that is overhead mobility. And just being able to fully extend the arm. Now what I see and what I saw here as well is some people have, it, have the kettlebell up like this. And watch my elbows. These are not fully extended arm. The arm is not straight. The arm is still bent at the elbow. So I want to make sure that the arm looks like this, okay? Full extension of the arms means that the biceps, the upper part of your arm, is close to your ear and that the elbow is not bent. These are not fully extended arms. These are extended arms. And as a result of fully extending your arms, it might be that you feel some tension around that area. This is to totally normal because if you bring your arm over your head for the first time really in a full extension, it might be that some of your muscles who have been tight all the time have to loosen up a little bit. And that's what we see in almost every case because many people work like this or work down here, not a, a, a small percentage of people works over here. Okay? So that is the press. Just to recap, we have learned the hinge or the deadlift, this, the uh, double-handed press, and now we're going to take a look at the swing. Watch this. Now, what we love to do is the so-called hand-to-hand swing. So as I'm swinging the bell, I bring the bell up to approximately chest level, and on that position, I am switching hands. So as the bell travels upward, my other hand takes over, and then I let gravity do its thing. So let me demonstrate the exercise first, listen to how I breathe, and then I'm going to explain it, and then you can do it. Watch. I always got to fix my, my earbuds. So do you see what's happening? We have learned the deadlift, right? And the hinge. So the swing is a ballistic version or a version with a lot of momentum of the hinge. This is what's happening. Boom. 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 Boom, and I'm isolating the midsection of my body from the rest of my body. I'm not bending the knees intentionally. I'm not bending my spine intentionally. Everything help, happens around here. This is the fulcrum, this right here. So everything moves around the fulcrum, which is your hip. Now I want to teach you two things which are important. We call it ABC and ABD. ABC means arm body connection. So what does that mean? It means that you want to maximize the time your arm is connected to the body and minimize the time the arm is disconnected from the body. And this leads me to point number two, which is ABD, arm body distance. So if the kettlebell is traveling and I fully extend my arm every time this is happening, the bell pulls me forward. So I don't want the bell to travel too far away from me. I want it to be a little bit more in my close proximity. I do not bend my elbow, but I do not, do not fully extend it. We're somewhere in between. And the last and final important thing about the swing is your hands are only hooks. Human beings, we are handsy creatures. Every time we grab something, we want to move it with our arm muscles. With the swing, 
it is completely different. Your arm is not completely loose, but it's not under tension. So watch as I do the single hand swing, so you can see a little bit better what happens with the arm. Watch me. Can you see how when the kettlebell falls, how gravity does its thing? I don't keep it, I don't keep tension. Watch, this is what it looks like if I'm using my arm. That's not the idea. I let it fall. And as I'm letting it fall, remember this cue, arm body connection. I wait until my arm reconnects with the body to maximize the time my arm is connected to the body. I'm hinging and then I let go. And we want to learn the front hand version. So you switch the bell every time it's up here with a front hand. I always do that like this. This is called a backhand. Do not let it confuse you. We swing like this. Okay? Now, try to follow me. We're going to do 10 reps. Make sure your kettlebell is a little bit in front of you. You want to follow me and then I'm watching your form. Are you ready? It's three, two, one. Let's go. Park the bell. Okay? If these are your first swings, we always say these are your worst swings. So it takes some patience and some time. To wrap this up, we're going to do a little workout. Okay? So we have the deadlift, we have the press, and we have the swing. So now what we are going to do, listen closely, is we're going to do a three minute workout. The first minute is your deadlift. The second minute is your double-handed press. And the final minute is your swing. Now, it's very important. You go your own pace. If you have to put the kettlebell down, relax a little bit or whatever have you, you do it. As the time keeps ticking, don't let it stress you out. You listen to your body and this is how you act, okay? So you see the timer behind me? It says it's a zero right now. So when I started with that one minute, we're gonna do a deadlift. So whenever you are ready, make sure you're hydrated if you need to. Grab a sip of water. Grab the kettlebell between your legs. And we start with the deadlift in three, two, one. Are you ready? Let's do it. And what I want you guys to do is to move slowly. Move slowly. If we move slowly, we understand what happens in the body. Don't go too fast. And every time you end up in the top position, when your legs are fully straight and your body stands up or is fully erected, you breathe out. Use your hips, ladies and gentlemen. I am watching. Keep going. You have 20 seconds on the clock. Niels, way better, way better. Relax your neck, Niels. You can look down towards the floor. Yeah, genau. Relax. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, genau. <laughs> That's German. <laughs> you look down to the floor and then back up. Awesome. Now everybody relax. Good one. Relax your arms. Breathe a little bit. Now we're going to jump into the double-handed press. Okay? Remember, I'm demonstrating it to you again. I clean the bell up into the so-called, we call it CrossFit grip. Your thumbs are inside the window. The fingers touch the bell, and then the handle connects or points towards your chest, elbows close to the body, okay? Are you ready to bring the kettlebell up? It's in three, two, one. Let's do it. Pull the bell up, and go slowly, ladies and gentlemen. Take your time, and make sure you control that bell. The handle always points towards you, or once it's overhead, it points behind you. Try to fully extend your elbows. Keep going. Go very slow. Go very slow. Yes, fully extend those arms. Fully extend those arms. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing, gentlemen and ladies. Good stuff. Hey, Matt's in the house. Awesome, Matt. Didn't see you. Haha, <laughs> keep going. 
Yes, knees. Try to really extend your arms. Fully extend the elbows. Keep the arm, yeah, close to your ears. Good one, Marlene. Great extension. And relax, everybody. Good. Breathe. Take a breather. Now here comes the swing. Oof. Let's do this. Now with the swing, what I want you to think about is think about the movement first for the, for the first couple of seconds. There's a lot of computing going on in your brain. You need a lot of RAM power. But the final 30 seconds, I, I like how Dan John describes it. You, can't, you kick monkey brain off the ladder, boom. And then you just try to do it. Just do, do. Don't think, just do, okay? Whenever you are ready, one minute of swings in two, one. Let's pull it off. Come on. Make sure you guys keep breathing. And keep moving. Nice. That's better, Niels. Relax your neck, Niels. Relax your neck. Oh, good one, Marlene. Nice, Pato. Oh, look at these swings, Matt. Check, there's a lot of power, man. I love it. Okay, you have 20 seconds to go. Now don't think, just move. Don't think, just move. Nice one, Jane. Bring it up a little bit higher. A little bit higher. Yeah, up to chest level. You guys are awesome. Keep moving. It's five, four, three, two, one. Park the bell. Okay. Good stuff. Breathe. Now, as you can see, that's just a three-minute workout. We have a deadlift. We have a double-handed press. We have a swing. So that's three minutes of work. If you're just getting started, you just take your time. Now you relax for a couple of minutes or whatever have you, and then you do these three exercises again. If you need more rest in between the exercises, if you can't do it unbroken, unbroken means you try to train all these exercises together. If you're not able to do it, who cares? You take a break, relax, and then you go at it back again, okay? If you have these three minutes and you're looking for a great workout, you do two to three rounds or maybe four rounds, you got yourself a 15 minute workout or a 10 minute workout, and you're done for the day. And if you wanna upgrade it, you feel like, hey, Gregory, now I'm getting stronger, I like it, you upgrade the time. Two minutes of deadlifts, two minutes of the press, two minutes of the swing, and you have six minutes of volume. And then that's what we do. Then we add one minute of break, that's seven minutes of work, and then you do two to three rounds or four rounds or whatever have you. Here's the next step that I want you to do. Like the video, consider subscribing and share it with a friend who's also a kettlebell beginner. And then I want you to watch this video right here here this is where i'm ranking kettlebell exercises from beginners to advanced to professional this will help you to get a true understanding of the difficulty level of the various kettlebell exercises go watch it right now